Should you buy a used cheap luxury car? A lot of people are asking me that question over and over and over again, and I can't help but respond because I am truly an advocate for buying used luxury cars, but there's very strict criteria around doing that. It's clearly not for everybody. There's just some people, it just doesn't make sense to go out and extend yourself and buy that used luxury car because it could potentially bankrupt you, but there's some great ways around that. My first journey down the luxury used car market, years ago, I bought my first Porsche 911. It was a 1979 SC, and it didn't seem like great value at the time it was about $20,000 and it needed a little bit of work. It was in great shape, but clearly a 911 used that's 10 or 15 years of age is likely going to need some maintenance. And then of course, my father comes along and says, why don't you be smart and do something like buy a pickup truck or a Dodge Ram? He went and bought himself a brand new Ram and of course end up seeing drastic depreciation over the course of the next five, six, seven years. He paid $30,000 for his truck and after five years, that thing was only worth about $8,000. Whereas my Porsche 911, I bought for for 20 grand and in five years that thing all of a sudden was worth twenty eight thousand dollars go figure okay not everybody wants to buy a used porsche 911 but these are a lot of great luxury cars here let's take a look at this because on the average most used luxury cars are depreciating to the tune of about 40 50 60 percent of the original value in the first five years meaning that you can get yourself an astounding deal on a relatively late model luxury car for simple easy money the kind of money that you can get yourself into a slightly used mercedes benz for the similar cash as a brand new Toyota Avalon. Go figure there. Many people are going to use the simple argument that a vehicle like this Toyota 4Runner clearly makes way more sense. Yeah, you can step in and buy that brand new vehicle for $85,000, $90,000 and think you got yourself a wonderful vehicle. And while they're literally outlast the second coming, obviously they're not a luxury vehicle. Even though you can get some of the luxury appointments, you can get a sunroof, you can get sometimes leather interior or heated seats, they're still not a true luxury vehicle. They don't handle like one, they don't have the brand, and they usually don't have drivetrains that match up with typical luxury vehicles like you find in this Mercedes GLE 450, which is a beautiful vehicle. Now, here's a classic example of a vehicle that you can get yourself five years later, skip it today, come back in another four or five years when that person's done with it and pick it up. And you could probably find that vehicle for as little as $30,000, clearly less than half of its original value. And you can get yourself a magnificent vehicle. Just take a look at it in closer detail and understand the type of quality vehicle you can actually get. You can get powerful engines, which make this move down the road very briskly. Of course, you have beautiful five point star and alloy wheels that definitely make you feel like a king you have wonderful upgraded style led headlights whereas you drive something like this it's great it's going to last forever but remember you've got simpler projector headlamps you don't get all the fancy led business you have a very robust but very simplistic type of grill and even the alloys while they are nice they're usually smaller and a little more basic and oddly enough some people are going to say this makes far more financial sense than buying a used mercedes but why would that be even though these hold a great value they still do lose money even a beautiful vehicle like a toyota 4runner today can lose as much as 30 or 40 percent of its original value in the first five years and that then translates to dollars out of your pocket so then you have to ask the question does that level of depreciation 30 40 grand in the first five years wait to what you can expect for repairs on these vehicles yeah these will break you have to anticipate that and there will be failures you're gonna have elevated maintenance costs you're gonna have check engine lights and expensive battery changes you'll have brakes that cost four times as much to replace as they do on a Toyota. You'll have tires that are much larger and they will cost a lot more money than they do over there on a Toyota. So all those parts and maintenance prices will come at a bit of an elevated expense. You also have turbos on this vehicle and this Toyota doesn't have turbos. It's a naturally aspirated V6 engine that makes about 270 horse. So you're going to have less of those other moving parts. But people truly fear what they don't know. And even with a turbo failure, you're only going to expect to pay about three or four thousand dollars. So if you lost a set of turbos, in the course of five, seven years, you're really not spending all that much money. Think about that depreciation offset. You're losing a huge amount of money by using that vehicle and having that peace of mind over buying a slightly used luxury vehicle can actually provide you some fun, frivolous experiences for the outright cost of service and maintenance. And I understand not everybody can stomach the thought of unexpected repairs on their used luxury car. You could possibly even do what we did. Find yourself a three or four year old luxury car, look into it, make sure it's got low miles on it, buy from a dealer, get a certified pre-owned warranty, and it might get you an extra two or three years of peace of mind type motoring. But that's not what the real question is. The real question is, would you buy, in fact, used luxury car that's cheap without warranty? What is the value add there? We personally bought one of these used 
slight little bit of warranty left, but we had no qualms about what that differential on depreciation looked like versus what we would be willing to anticipate for repairs. I've also owned numerous BMWs over the years, and I also know there are certain models that you want to buy and other models you don't want to buy. I've also had Mercedes SUVs in the past, and I had no problems with buying those because I also did my research and I knew which ones were the problem areas and which ones were the good ones. And so it's not just expecting the unexpected, it's also having the bankroll to support it. You can't own a used luxury vehicle like this and expect not to have dollars in the bank. As a matter of fact, yes, that's where some people love having a brand new vehicle. They get the warranty, the peace of mind, and they can literally roll with zero dollars in the bank account because a lot of people are overdrawn these days. A lot of people don't have the money in the bank. A lot of people, unfortunately, with cost of living, don't have that extra rolling flowing capital. So what they end up having to do is they get yourself a new vehicle, warranty, everything's covered. They don't even have to think about it. If you are, in fact, going to buy a used luxury vehicle, you have to have some money in the bank. Classic example of that. Use Lamborghini Gallardo. You buy a car like that, the e-gear clutch will go in about 10, 15,000 kilometers. If you don't have money set aside, expect to pay 10 to $15,000 out of pocket. If you don't have that money sitting in the bank to anticipate a $15,000 repair, that car is going to be sitting up on jack stands for months or years until you're able to save that cash up. I also have a BMW E60 M5. Everybody knows that S85 engine isn't necessarily the most reliable engine around. It is one of the best engines that BMW's ever built from a technologically advanced perspective it's coupled up with the also the smg3 gearbox which is horrifyingly lurchy and unreliable but put it all together and it creates a dynamic driving experience you won't get anywhere by today's modern cars everything's electric these days cars are disconnected electric steering electric brakes everything is electric automated you just don't even feel the cars anymore that's why that's from a generation of vehicles that you actually get to enjoy and that's why there is a certain value and passion that comes because of some of these older european luxury vehicles or Supercars. So you don't buy yourself a four or five year old Range Rover that just ran out of warranty and you get the vehicle for 60% less and you buy this vehicle for $70,000 when it was $150,000 new and think, hey, I'll roll with that. There's no warranty, but I don't have a lot of money in the bank. That's okay. That's not okay. You're going to feel the burn, the hurt, and that vehicle's likely going to spend a lot of time in the shop waiting for you to sign the check and watch those checks bounce. This is going to be a cost prohibitive vehicle to own outside of warranty. Like I said, unless you've got some bankroll have five or ten or fifteen maybe twenty thousand dollars in the bank that you don't need it's fun money it's there available just in case something breaks and here's another example of a car that i've bought in the past of course we have a porsche 911 and it's one of those dream cars for a lot of people and a lot of people see these and they think hey i'd love to get into an older 911 maybe i don't have the money for a new one so i'll buy an older one yeah they're a great option but know this 911s are one of the highest cost per serve per annual service of any car on the market today think about this if you've a bad clutch that needs to be replaced or you have a rear main seal that goes or some other problem on the back end if you have an issue that engine and gearbox have to come out the bottom of the car and be fully removed from the vehicle to do a clutch job that's going to cost you five six seven thousand dollars so if you think you're going to buy one of these on a shoestring budget you may be challenged again it's a phenomenal deal and i'd suggest a 911 is always one of those cars if you have a few bucks in the bank you don't want to forego that you definitely an experience you want to try if you can afford it, but it needs to have money rolling capital in the bank. We also know that Porsche Cayenne are going to average about $20,000 for 10 years of ongoing service and maintenance. So if you pick this vehicle up at five years of age, you could pretty much expect to pay another $10,000 in the next five years of service. Even though they're relatively reliable, there's some very costly maintenance and servicing that goes into these vehicles. And that's if nothing even breaks. Other places where used luxury cars can provide huge value is if you're a great do-it-yourself and you're not scared to get your finger nails dirty. That's how I've literally lived and afforded to own many luxury cars. I've owned many over the years and learned to fix a lot of those parts. YouTube's a beautiful thing. There's lots of do-it-yourself. It shows you the ins and outs, the mistakes, and how to actually fix certain parts. I've saved tons of money, and I'm talking thousands, tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years on service and maintenance that I've been able to save and do myself as opposed to taking the car to the dealer. So that's another great example of why certain people can certainly look at buying a used luxury car 
and save a ton of money and have one of the best driving experiences of their life. We'd have used Mercedes SUV years ago. I learned over the years how to do full tune-up, spark plugs, coil changes. I did a water pump. I did a full set of brakes. I even adjusted the sunroof at one point. It would stop working. I did virtually everything to that SUV because it was of the older generation. It had a naturally aspirated V8 and it was just ultra bulletproof. So I was able to save a ton of money on that. We've also had BMWs where I learned to do almost every kind of service available there too. Thermostat that failed on our old 320i BMW. That's an inline six naturally aspirated. I changed that. Dealer told me it would be $1,200 for thermostat, coolant, flush. What was that? I went, I got myself a jobber part, a jug antifreeze, and I went and did it myself. Spent an afternoon in the driveway and I was able to change that out for as little as 300 bucks. And I saved myself almost a thousand dollars. Other examples, I had a BMW 3 35 with the N54, another classic example of a DIY type car. You can have one of the best tuner cars out there, but you just have to be able to work on it. I did a water pump that was underneath, it's electric, and the thermostat. That too, just parts were told to be $1,200. I got them jobber aftermarket, I got them for about $400. Then I spent a good day to it doing the water pump thermostat change. I also did some resealing on the top of the engine that had some oil leaks, and I did all that work with my own sweat labor, and I saved a ton of money on that BMW 335. So you can save a ton of money if you do it yourself, any kind of repairs. And it doesn't even mean you have to commit to everything. It doesn't mean that you say, hey, I'm a DIYer. No, all you have to say is, hey, if that's a task that I might be able to bite off, then bite it off, try it. Maybe the next one you can't, you take it into the dealer for that. Flip flop, get yourself a few basic tools and you'll be able to diagnose and troubleshoot and repair some of the more basic elements. But even if you don't, there's still ways that you can own one of these beautiful luxury cars on the used car market and not lose your shirt. Other big things you gotta keep in mind when you're buying a used luxury car, the problem areas that are gonna cost you big time, engines and gearboxes. Know where those vehicles are problematic. Know which vehicles have those weird anomalies. That's what you really wanna focus on. Well, here, what we're looking at here is this Mercedes-Benz. If you get this generation with the four cylinder, it's a C300 that actually has a French built engine. Some say it's good, some say not so much. So you gotta understand some of those nuances. Then BMW is classic example of things you need to know and which engines to avoid and which engines to buy. You can look at a car like this, a three or a four series car. First of all, look at this, it's been damaged. It looks like all creased. What we're looking at here is a 430 because four means it's the coupe. The 430 represents the lower level of engines. If you go up to the 35 or the 40, then you're dealing with the six cylinder engines. But in this generation, you're looking at a four cylinder engine. You wanna to stick to the later generations, the ones with the B48 engine. The pre the predecessor was the N20. Problematic, timing chain eater, and you didn't want to touch it. So you have to know the differences. Not all four cylinders are the same with the BMW world. We're looking at the old Porsche Boxster. What we're looking at here, the early generation, actually has a problem they call the intermediate shaft issue. And of course, if you have that bearing that goes out, although it's relatively low probability, we potentially could take out the entire engine. And the sad part is because these only vehicles are only worth about ten to $15,000 on the used car market for the first generation, that could offer often write that vehicle off in its entire value. So sometimes you want to validate some of those nuances. Has that IMS bearing been replaced? Has the clutch been updated? Some of those factors, you have to ask those questions when you're shopping for one of these older cars. So a lot of it is understanding those nuances, asking the questions, making sure the service is up to date, or more importantly, just staying away from certain models altogether. Newer versions could be a little bit better. For example, a 718 Boxster like we're looking at here actually has a four cylinder turbo, although maybe it doesn't quite have the same pizzazz as the flat six did. This is a little bit more durable. So the question about whether you should buy a used luxury car is even more relevant today. Used luxury vehicles often take a bigger depreciation, a bigger hit than most cars. Now in recent years, of course, this last couple years, car prices have escalated. They're out of control. So you go in and walk and no dealers want to negotiate. Most of the time, they're going to pitch you with a number. And if you don't like it, you can walk. They've got somebody parked behind you waiting for that car. So often the negotiation's not there for a new vehicle. So you're going to pay top dollar, get brutal or no incentives, seriously high finance and lease rates makes buying a new car even worse than ever. A lot of people I really even heard buying a Jeep Wagoneer and then a year later realizing, well, I got to move. I can't really afford it. And then saying I have to sell it. Well, they'd be upside down on their loan, which is a bad, bad place to be. So that's why buying a used luxury car is also an extra win, not just from the value added. You can get yourself a beautiful yesterday's version of a luxury car. If you learn how to fix on a few things, you can save even more money there. But more importantly, you can avoid that whole brand new 
new car market that seems to be escalated really high right now due to inflation and the jacking up of prices and the markup that a lot of dealers are throwing down on their new vehicles. The big takeaway, you really just have to understand that you need some money in the bank for those repairs. Don't count that money. Don't say, I'll take out a loan or a line of credit. Have that money in the bank that you don't care, you don't need, and you can satisfy some of those ad hoc repairs that you might need when they pop up, because they will pop up. It will be a thing, it happens on any used luxury car. They're very complicated, powerful drivetrains, lots of electronics, and if you have some money in the bank, you just won't have that stress associated with owning a used luxury car. And at the end of the day, what's more exciting, to drive a five-year-old Mercedes-Benz or a brand new Toyota Venza? I don't know, you tell me, but that's just where I'm coming from. Which is the most responsible approach from a financial perspective? Well, let's face it, that new Toyota will lose about half its value in the first five years. And that's why I would personally buy a cheap used luxury car. And with all of that said, you're probably gonna wanna check that out because that's all about the most reliable luxury cars on the market today. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.